A homer is a really a, a great place uh, to go for metadata, and uh, and you have a lot of different types of places uh, and types of uh, networks that hold the metadata. And I just want to just show some of these down below here. Of course, there's ours, which is the you know the NWS co-op program, and then. Uh, there's also a lot of information that goes into GHCND, which is the daily uh, coming from all over the world, and many other different ones, ASOS, LCD sites, the Climate Reference Network. And uh, it, they give you kind of an idea on this uh, third column over here under number of stations. Uh, you can see there's a lot of stations <laughs> that are involved here. And they also have a product page. So this could take you directly to a page if you wanted to look at some information on a given network. And what's really kind of neat, if you ever need a complete station list of everything, uh, they do have a list here. So you can actually click on these and uh, view them. And uh, also in the last column, uh, you can also see there are some station photos that are available, uh, especially for the uh, uh, Climate Reference Network sites. So uh, a lot of good information right here if you want to uh, take a look at uh, just uh, where all our stations are across the United States and even globally. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take, a little, take a look up here, though, in the little, in the little search box, which is Station History Search. And, uh, and I want to show first all the different types of ways you can actually uh, put in or different IDs. You can do a, use a co-op ID. An FAA ID, a GHCND, ICAO, uh, NWSLI. So you, if you want to use that, you can if you've got that. And of course, there's many other difference, WMO, WBAN, for those uh, who are familiar with that. And uh, so if, if you want to uh, like use an ICAO, for example, you can put in here, like uh, I'll just use KMC, oops, excuse me, KMCI for Kansas City International. And you click on search, and it's, it doesn't change the page for you. It just keeps you on the, the actual page you're at. And what's interesting here is it gives you kind of a rundown of all the basics of uh, the metadata for Kansas City International, uh, going back uh, more or less from 1957 uh, forward to the present. And it tells you the name and the different identifiers and the year uh, approximately when those uh, started and the date and what climate division you're in, and uh, so forth. And there's kind of some really interesting information uh, also. And if you want to use a, if you want to find out what things were on a given date, particularly, you can actually choose that, and it'll just pull you, it'll just pull everything to that date forward. So you can kind of see what was going on during that time. So let me go ahead and clear that, and uh, so we can uh, go to the current date. 11th. So I'll just go ahead and search on it again to get a clean copy for you. Uh, also up here is the element level data. And, uh, and this is pretty good because it'll show you all the different uh, elements that are available in the data and also some of the equipment data. And um, I'll click that on here. You can see you can turn it on and off. And uh, it gives you a little bit of information, not just on your equipment, but also uh, the exposure, the distances, and so forth that you put in. And underneath here is a lot of the information from different time periods as things changed uh, over time or periods of time. Now, some of these may not necessarily be uh, anything. If this was a co-op site, usually it would be your renditions, your information, but not necessarily. There's been times where uh, it, there's been uh, changes to the database, uh, the metadata through the years have been done by uh, NCEI or formerly NCDC. And uh, that's uh, also included in here. For various reasons, things were made at different tables. There are reference tables here, so it can tell you exactly what the all the different things mean that you're seeing there. So if you're wondering about the time of observation codes, the different uh, elements, there, uh, this will explain it to you what this all really means. So there's some really good uh, information. I think they've done a, a really nice job. And here's one that's really kind of fascinating is the location data. And 
this could be very, very helpful uh, if you want to go back and look at a particular co-op site because it tells you uh, pretty much where, what's the, uh, the history of where these sites have been. For example, if I click on number one, this will show me a little bit uh, where, uh, and I click on location details, it can tell me a little bit about what change was made at a particular time. So there was a, obviously a change in topography there. But um, let's, let's try this actually with a co-op site. And um, could anybody give me a good ID number to work with? I can also go with a, a, a... Dawn, one of my favorites is 115079. This is Christy from NCDC. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. 11, <laughs> it's a 11... 50, a 50, 50, you said? 79, yeah. 79? Yep. Okay. Lincoln, Illinois. Lincoln, Illinois. Okay, there we <laughs> go. Hey, Billy, <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite stations to use. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, and, and Christy, if you want to chime in any time, please go ahead, because I'm, I'm just kind of just uh, bringing this up. You're doing a great job. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I just want to just zoom up here uh, to where the National Weather Service is here, and you can see that um, here's the first uh, entry, and, and we'll click on for details. And uh, it looks like this was an entry for uh, topography. But let's take a look at number two here. So number two is a location, it, it appears, that uh, came up from, uh, well, looks like uh, from 2005 to 2007 approximately. And let's see if there was any real changes here. Um, nope, just a little information, so it doesn't look like there's too much. But there was a change, obviously, in, in location that was made. Mm -hmm. And um, then if we really zoom in here it's like well it looks like we it was a remove again <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> this goes back to uh before that three uh versions back so we're now in 2001 to 2005 and uh you can see that um it says now station within and one mile east southeast of post office at lincoln illinois so it kind of gives you an idea of uh, how things have changed at a station with time. And I guess, I think four, uh, I'm not sure where four is, unless it's underneath the one here, possibly. You can, uh, do you see where it says low precision map? Yeah, oh, that's right. That'll help to find that. Yeah. It may be, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. low precision maps. That's, oh, thank you. That's a, that's a great way to see a lot of different ones that are out there. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, what that does is um, for our older time periods, when because in the past the way we used to do it was that we used every um, location we were given as a pinpoint on the map. But we've come to find out when the station like really old dates, like 1800s, early 1900s, when you really only had like degrees minutes, it wasn't that you know it was hard to make a pinpoint. So we used these boxes, as you can see, like the little bounding box around the seven, eight, and the six. That just tells you that the station was kind of in that area during that time period because we don't have an exact because, you know, we may have only had degrees minutes. So that's kind of what that's for is to kind of help you see this isn't exactly a pinpoint when it was in that area. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to have that there. And uh, uh, one thing I didn't have turned on, I guess, here is obstructions. I forgot to do that. So there's descriptions, topography, relocations, and obstructions. So you can also then get the, all the information you hear about the different uh, obstructions you had, uh, like building, radar, towers, you might expect to have <laughs> near, a, near a WFO. So it's really loaded with a lot of information here. And there's actually one last tag. It's miscellaneous data. And uh, Christy, you, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what kind of is underneath here uh, as far as the miscellaneous data? Sure. So like um, you had mentioned, most of the changes you'll see, especially on the co-op stations, are going to be due to your, to your B44 renditions. But what we do here, um, so the first tab, the, the upper section here, you see remarks. What that's going to tell you are basically the remarks that come in on your B44s. So basically whatever you put in that B44 square, you know, in the square for uh, now it's report reason detail. That's going to be here in this remark. Now underneath that in the station edit history, 
that's where you're going to see, like you can see the version numbers, like those are the numbers of your renditions. Then when you see these ad hoc source updates, those are going to be information. That's going to be the changes that we here at NCDC have made. And this is the way that we keep tracks. So if you go in, you'll see like this most current ad hoc change was there were observer details in there. Um, this was before SIS came live. And this is before we had the chance to have those National Weather Service only comments that don't go public. So this is probably something in there saying like, you know, the observer was sick or something like that. Um, so this is the way we keep track of every change that's made to the station within Homer. So whether that change comes in from National Weather Service or whether we make that change based on information from National Weather Service, it's all maintained here. So that that's really nice because you can see everything that's uh, being mm -hmm. done there. Yeah, that's uh, that's really neat. So um, uh, so anyway, but this just gives you a, this is just a little bit of a taste, you know, of of what uh, Homer can do for you. I mean, it has a lot of really uh, great information. Uh, Christy, is there anything you'd like to add at this point as far as uh, information or? Um, things people can look at that maybe I I missed so far? <laughs> well, I think you, you did a great overview. Um, it's just one, it's good to know that, you know, you can come here if you only have your co-op ID. If you really want to know the GHC and DID, this is the easiest way for you to find that GHC and DID is come in with a co-op ID, and then you'll see you'll find it right here on the station level, which is where anytime you open the station in Homer, it's going to come straight up to this station level metadata. Then another thing is with the element level, the PHR level data, um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen now, SIS is having some conversion issues. And a lot of times, if you're going to go into SIS and go into your station reports and look at the previous rendition in SIS, you're going to find that sometimes it's not accurate. Here, the, all the information that's in this element level came from CSSA, so it is correct. So if you ever look at SIS and you know, you're looking at the previous rendition, you can always compare it to Homer to make sure that that conversion was correct because there's still a lot of issues there. Um, they're working on that. Hopefully that will be fixed soon. But for the time being, this is a good way to look at what was there you know, when you're doing a new rendition. Um, you, on the search, you can search for your co-op IDs either with a dash or without a dash. That's something we just added to. Like John put in 115079 without a dash. Now if he had put the dash in, because some people put the dash in the co-op ID, some people don't. So it's yes, yeah, so you can search on it either way. Uh, and you'll still get your station, which is a, a nice little feature. Because we'd actually had people call us and say, I can't figure out how to find my station because they were putting dash in. Um, with your location search, if you pick any state, it will give you the ability um, to pick your counties. And that way you can look for stations in a specific county. Oh, yeah. You had your yeah. So if you clear that out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to find. So then it'll bring you up each station for that county, and then it'll also give you the options where up here in the bar there you can hit to display only the open stations. So if you don't want to see closed stations, you want to see just what's open. Like if you were going to look for a, you know you're going to put in a new co-op station, you want to see you know are there any open stations in that area. This gives you the ability right quick to just there on the screen you can see what's open. <clears throat> and then from those, if you click on any of the little, little red tags, um, and then you can click show station history and it'll bring it up below down here. It'll bring you that station history for that station. Um, which this one unfortunately doesn't have anything for PHR. But it, it kind of, <laughs> oh, it's a Cocoa Raw station. So we also have Cocoa Raws in here. And then what you want to do, if you wanted to, if you scroll back up to the search, you want to narrow this down, go over to Network over here on your right. And click, just click co-op, or yeah, co -op, you can do either one. Then you can see it'll show you just your co There's only three co-op stations in this county in Illinois right now. So just kind of gives you a quick way to look at what's in the area. And it's one of the nice little features we have. And then you can search on station names. Like if you want to just find a certain station name um, over under name, you can just look. And if you only know part of the station name, you can do it contains. You know, you can. I think if you drop that down, you can do starts with, ends with, that kind of stuff. It makes it kind of easy to, you know, see what's available. I mean, it's just got it's got a few, you know, nice little search features. 
Um, it also gives you the ability to um, save, you know, like if you find a station that you've got, you know, you're interested in, you can save that information off, or you can just do a printout so you can see exactly what you, you know, what you were looking at on the screen. You can print it out. Down here, you're saving your print. That doesn't look pretty. It normally looks prettier than that. <laughs> oh, that's just what's. Uh... Let me go ahead and print it. And, uh, and then that way you can see your snapshot right there on your screen. So if you, you know, you're working in multiple things, you can print that out real quick. It's just a, an easy way to keep that information right there where you need it. But, so that's, that's kind of basically a quick overview. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. There you go. That looks a little better. Yeah, that looks like it's supposed to look, yeah. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions for either uh, Christy or myself on this? And it's uh, it's very easy to find, um, even if you put just ncdc.noaa.gov, it's just slash H-O-M-R, uh, Homer. Yeah, and there's no login necessary. I mean, it's easy. Once you pull it up, you're searching. Okay. Any uh, thoughts, questions? Has anybody used this before or he's taken a look at it, had any experience with it they'd like to share? Okay. Well, I guess it's very quiet, either that or uh, <laughs> I, we lost everybody. I hope we didn't. <laughs> well, well, thanks for showing it to everybody. And sure. Questions, feel free to give us a call. We're always happy to help out. We're glad to see people using it. Hey, Christy and John. Yes, mm -hmm. go ahead. This is Terry at Omaha. Um, one thing I'm getting out of this is uh, we can we can certainly see, looking at this, how powerful this could be for searching and stuff like that. And it just, again, kind of bugs me about the fact that how hard it is for us to use SIS to get the stuff to you like this. I can see once it gets there, it's really nice, very usable type tool, but still, it's so difficult to get assist to, uh, to operate the way it's supposed to on our end. So I just wanted to make that comment. Otherwise, uh, I've been in there trying to use this, the Homer thing, and, and your uh, little guidance there, that, uh, that that really helps a lot. I'll, I'll use this a lot more. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I know they're, they're trying to make improvements in SIS, and, uh, you know, we're always willing to do anything we can to help you with SIS. You know, if you have questions, just don't hesitate to give us a call, drop us an email, and we'll do what we can on our end to help you with SIS. I mean, I understand there's a lot of frustration. Um, but we're doing what we can here to help out. Okay, yeah, we appreciate that. Hey, John, this is Bryant in Asheville. Oh, hi, Bryant. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, please, uh, please provide some color commentary. Uh, that's okay. Um, I just wanted to mention a feature here that's been very helpful. Uh, some of the offices around the country, not just with Central Region, um, have used this. If you go up on the screen on the upper right-hand corner, and there's a link for API reports and contact, um, click the reports link. And um, going, yeah, following down below, you'll see uh, files that are available that contain some of the metadata that Homer has available. And um, there's some offices that want to know, um, they want to have a Google Earth layer. And if you go further down uh, uh, under other networks, you'll see where there's a text file as well as Google Earth layers and an explanation of the layout uh, for co-op, LCD, and some of the uh, some of the networks. So I just want to mention that that that's been very useful for some of our customers who want to query Homer but want to have a different way to display the information. That there are the text files, and when you open that, yeah, the KMZ file that you're opening up, um, it'll open up in Google Earth, and if it works as intended, it will show you the stations that are within the list of the Google Earth layer that you um, have access. There you go. So you see all of the uh, pins for all the stations. And it gives you the ability to work in Google Earth to um, display the metadata for the different networks the way that you want it. And you can deselect, uh, based on what you select in Google Earth, you can deselect some of the stations. So if you only want it for your state, uh, it you have the ability to do so. So I just wanted to mention that very neat feature for that. 
and when you click the uh, pins, it gives you the related information, uh, latitude, longitude, right there. And you have the ability to um, to display it however you want it, select what, what different layers you want to include, what not to include. So, and, and there you go. Uh, you can select, um, you can deselect and then select this with like Illinois. Um, and you'll have to scroll over to see how that appears. But we've, but we've had customers that have found this really useful and have, and we actually have, I think, um, here in North Carolina, the I think it's is it the Museum of Natural Science, Christy, that utilized this. Uh, they provided, yeah, they provide. I think they use the ASOS stations. They provided a they created a map that has been displayed in one of their exhibits, and they've utilized these Google Earth layers. So just want to mention that in case you in case the offices in your region uh, are interested in doing something similar. Uh, they have the ability to do so with Google Earth layers or importing the text files that are available on the reports page. So. Oh, thank you, Brian. Yeah, that's that's really a, that's a cool thing. If you yeah. want to use Google Earth because you can really get in and see what what you're dealing with and right right where it's at. You can you can even check your latitude longitude <laughs> probably exactly see if you're yeah, fairly exactly. close. Right, and and the other thing is the reports. They all they also note um, when they were last updated, so you know how recently the files and the Google Earth layers and all have been updated. So um, you know how recently they were um, created and made available on the Hummer page. There you go. You'll see where it says it has the new and then it says last updated so many days ago. So you know when it was last updated on our end. So, Which is generally pretty, once a month. Yeah, it's generally yeah, it's generally um, related to the metadata from last month. So, but it's fairly current based on what's in Homer. So, and then the uh, layout button will tell you a little bit about the kind of a uh, guide to what each column means. Or it exactly, exactly. Which can be very handy for decoding. As definitely. Well. Yeah, well, that's definitely. great. Oh, thanks, Bright. That's that's yeah. That's great to know. That's really great yeah. to know. Then another thing, if you go back up and go back to the main Homer page. Okay. Right here in this, you know, we have this little blurb here explaining what the Homer is. You'll see down here. There's a link for the National Weather Service approval process. It takes you to ten thirteen thirteen. There we go. Yeah. So it takes you right to the, for anybody that, you know, I know everybody loves it. It's it's fun reading. Um, it's right there for you. Oh, thank you. That's that's, that's great to have. Yeah, it's kind of hard sometimes. You go, where's that link? And, you know, <laughs> you never know where you, you left it, that's for sure. And I guess uh, I noticed there's also, oops. APIs here too. Yeah, that's but, for the Homer web service. Yeah, it's a web start. service. So anybody who's in the programming can probably have fun with this and uh, call the database for just about anything. Looks like yeah, all kinds of information. So we try to make it easy so that everybody can get what they need from us. Yeah, well that's great. Any any other questions or uh, Bryant or Christy? Do you have anything else uh, to show us or any ideas or thoughts? Uh, I don't for my end. Okay. Yeah. Feel free to give me a call if you need any help. Yeah. I'm always glad to help out with homework questions or with sys questions as best I can. Sure. And any other questions uh, from our offices? Okay. Well, great. Well, Christy, Bryant, and uh, thank you so much for being on the call and uh, being here with us. And uh, 